<sighs> I wanted to look like a teacher for the video, like nerdy, but I broke my glasses. So the only thing I have is this. And I think it's not appropriate, right? <laughs> Bonjour, bonjour, fragrance lover, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm talking about a famous perfumer, but before we go into the video, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram if you want to see a bit more of myself. So, today, back to Fragrance Academy, I'm teaching you or try to teach you something uh, because I love fragrance, but I think we, it's not all about ingredients, it's also about the history, about the inspiration and about the nose. And today I wanted to present you a very famous nose and a master perfumer, which is Olivier. Who is? Who is? Olivier Kretz. So just a little bit of storytelling about Olivier. First of all, Olivier was born in 1955, uh, sorry, in Grasse. Again, a perfumer that is born in Grasse. So we talked before last week about Jean-Claude Elena that was born in Grasse too. So, you know, I think like the, it plays a big role, I think, why you're born to what you're going to do after, definitely. And also what they have in common too, those two perfumers, is that um, his family worked around fragrances. Uh, basically, his grandfather and his dad were spending actually all of the life um, to buy and sell natural ingredients. And that's also like what we've seen in the background of Jean-Claude Elena. So like the Cresp name uh, in the region of uh, Grasse, in this region of France, is actually there since the 12th century. Just that. But he didn't uh, done all of his life in France because after in 1970s he went to uh, the States to study. I think that's where he worked around the first time around fragrance. He joined um, the group Fermerich, uh, that is a well-known group uh, around fragrances, in 1992. That's why I'm born. That's really where he started his work around fragrances and, then, and in 2006 he became a master perfumer. And all of his family actually worked around fragrances because his sister is Françoise Caron, so she's a perfumer too, she's really well known. And she's done few of the scents that I really adore, like my favorite Aqua di Parma with Colonia Intensa. Is uh, Iris Nobile, uh, unfortunately it's discontinued but it's the scent I absolutely love and she's done that. She also did Eau d'Orange Verte from Hermès and from Le Labo Fleur d'oranger actually. So it's really like surrounded with fragrances. And I've read uh, I've read a little interview, I think, in the Perfume Society website, and he was saying a bit more about himself and inspiration. And <laughs> they asked him what was um, his uh, favorite ingredient, and he said usually like flowery, quite something like quite sensual, like vanilla. And he also said that his least favorite ingredient was narcissus. <laughs> And yes, not. So yes, not. Okay, okay. If you want to, but now this is my favorite flower. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but you know, like uh, that's the beauty of fragrances, and that's why, like, it's interesting to know about the the perfumers because then you know more about what inspiration they get. But yeah, <laughs> sad. Now we're gonna talk about his famous creation. So he's done a lot actually, he's been creating a lot of fragrances, also he's the founder of the brand Acro Fragrances, which I really wanted to try, uh, but I didn't put my nose on it uh, now, but tell me what's your impression maybe of, of these fragrances, if you tried it before, I'm very very curious, I'm sure he's doing an amazing job. Uh, he's done a lot of things, like for example he worked for Cacharel, he's done a Noah, that is the scent I was wearing like when I was very young, uh, Anaïs Anaïs, des premiers délices for example. Uh, we have some Dior, we have Dune for um, uh, pour homme, for example, 
And uh, there was Midnight, Midnight Poison. I think he's done that on collaboration with Francais de Machi as well, another one. Uh, but yeah, Midnight Poison was one of my favorite. I think it's discontinued now, but I really adore this scent. Light blue as well for ladies. It's quite an iconic scent, light blue. Um, I think it's an easy scent for summertime, uh, but it, it really has that really like brightness. And I would say like, if you want an easy going scent for summer, it's so beautiful, it's iconic. He's done some Givenchy. He's done uh, Anjou des Monts by Givenchy. And this is something I really adore because it's got a lot of a bit darkness, sensuality and if done gentlemen as well for men so very like uh, I would say again an easy going fragrance but very a uh, gentleman like well that's the name so <laughs> what I have to say Jean-Paul Gaultier, Coco Rico Kenzo Amour, Low by Kenzo. Uh, by the way, uh, Low de Kenzo, I think is amazing for summer too. If you're looking for like a very like nice, lively, uh, fresh scent for summer, it's beautiful. Amour by Kenzo is my favorite. I'm not a massive fan of the flower by Kenzo, but Amour for me is divine because it's got a very like more depth and a lot of sensuality. Being created a lot of the little cute Nina Ritchie uh, is usually scent that I recommend for a bit like younger girls. Or, or something that you want a bit more playful, they're a bit more sugary, but really cute, cute scent. I love the bottle, by the way, it's so sweet. Parfum de Marly Sedley. He's done a collection as well, Valentina by Valentino, that I really love that scent. It's like a very delicate, soft uh, flower scent. And I've read also that he's been created Valentina uh, interpretation. There's a mere absolute and there's also a wood absolute did someone ever try that because i really want to know how it smells uh, because that sounds really interesting also like iconic scent like why sell now black opium well it's not really iconic because it's quite new but i think it will be uh, you have mon paris quite recently that have been created as well so you know like big fragrances that we've seen on screen a lot now i'm going to talk about my three personal favorite creation by olivier Cress. So first fragrances and a fragrance that you've seen a lot on my channel. I'm sorry, but you know, I love it. It's nice um, to share things you love. Anyway, so it's called Place Vendôme and this is by Boucheron and Boucheron is a jewelry uh, brand at the beginning but they're doing fragrances since years and years now. I do really love the Jaipur, Jaipur from uh, from Boucheron, classic Boucheron tour, beautiful. But yeah, so that's Boucheron. Uh, just a little talk about the bottle. So it's supposed to represent 150 years of lights um, and gems and precious stones. So you've got uh, like the cabochon like this and you've got like a little stone over here. It's really representative of the, 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 the look of the, um, the jewels. And also it's all faceted because uh, it's really like jewel-like. And it's also, I think, a reflection that the scent that you're gonna wear is very faceted. So it means there's different facets, different aspects during the day move. There's a lot of contrast. It's a very sparkling scent. It's a ray of light. It's a Florianto. So I really love Orientals. This is a Florianto's. It's a bit more flowery. You've got really like something very yummy. There's a bright pink pepper inside and that really uplifts the fragrance. It's not your typical like floral scent. It's got very a twist and a lot of um, projection to it stays on the skin amazingly and this is moving during the day at the beginning I can really smell that fresh pink pepper opening you know uh, with a lot of orange blossom that gives like a very solar note to the fragrance and then you can smell a creaminess slightly sweetness because basically there's the flowers and they are encapsulated in honey so it enrich the composition and then you can smell something a bit mysterious with benzoin notes and also about this is supposed to represent the, the pave, pavement of Place, Place Vendôme 2 so you know there's a lot of things to say very sensual and I think uh, Olivier's creation are really always very very sensual. I think that's one of the things that I can see in all of his scent. It's got really like a deep dry down that will be quite like warm, uh, you know. Uh, it's not sexy, it's sensual. So for me, very classy. The second one, 
I really enjoy from him uh, is from Penaligon. So he worked also with Penaligons, and there's one that is called Juniper Sling. So this is a really nice scent for spring and summer actually. And I love this scent because it really represents the house of Penaligons. So if you don't know, uh, Penaligons was established in London in 1970. So it's a British house. And what's best to represent British house than a gin tonic. <laughs> it really smells a bit like a gin tonic at the beginning and then it dry down to something a bit like more piney, a greener, earthy undertone with vetiver. But what is nice is really that effervescence that the, the scent would be. If you don't like uh, this kind of like green undertone, a bit mossy, uh, slightly sharp, zesty, you won't probably like this one. But if you want something a bit different than your usual uh, eau de Cologne from uh, the day, um, it's such a nice zesty daytime scent. So it's definitely female and also male, but it's more leaning to the masculine side as there's a lot of juniper berries and these usually smell like a bit more greener, piney, so it does have a bit that aftershave tone but I really love the twist of this scent because it's very unusual and I always find that a bit earthy tone or juniper tone give like a very elegant charismatic scent. It's very unusual and it smells very fizzy. It's a burst of freshness and I thought that would be nice to talk about it in now because it's really different from uh, the scent that he's been creating as well to my sense. And then the last one it's a scent I've been talking like quickly about as well but I couldn't avoid it because when you talk about Olivier and his creation I think you need to talk about this scent because this is iconic this is whether you hate it because usually people all hate it or they love it and this one for me is not something I used to have it now I, I think I wouldn't wear it that much uh, I might come back to it um, but honestly not anymore that much because I've been smelling it a lot but objectively I can recognize how the scent is amazing and made a revolution in perfume and this is simply Angel by Terry Mutler and this is absolutely iconic whether you hate it or not you need to agree with me on that it changed the whole role of perfumery in the 90s and um, he created this scent in 1992 again that's where I'm born <laughs> It's got a very strong DNA, that's why it's dividing people, but it's again that very sensual tone that Olivier is giving, intoxicating. Um, it's supposed to represent, I think, the padded shoulders that we were wearing in the 80s and at the beginning of the 90s, so it's really a statement. It's really like a shocking concept, just like uh, Thierry Magloire is always doing, which I think the scent is perfectly leaning to that. So I think Olivier made an amazing job like creating something that looks like the brand. It was the first oriental gourmand. Uh, so basically, it, I think he wanted to say that is it's a scent that you, you want to eat, you want to, to have it, you know, because it's so addictive. Very also usual, unusual note in fragrance. And also he made like a big revolution, this scent, because I, uh, you probably know that it was one of the first fragrances I think that was uh, refillable to the source. I think it was one of the first, but um, I remember when I used to do my internship in Sephora, my first one, um, there's a client that came with a star of Angel and was like, um, can you refill that for me? And I was just like, huh? <laughs> because I had no clue it was happening and I can tell you refill the bottle directly from the source like this it is so satisfying so thank you for that at the beginning you can smell a lot of coconut orange there's pineapple you know so it's really like different ingredients like you can see cotton candy cassis so it's extremely gourmand orchid as well these are flowers that are powerful jasmine red berries it's a profusion of ingredients and then you have got a dry down that is like tobacco tongue cabin caramel very sugary very cacao like as well but very intense if i was talking about uh, olivier crespa was for sure needed to talk about angel you know so yes and i've seen that the sister actually made uh, an interpretation of angel i thought it was quite cute that they've been working on the same 
fragrances, you know, uh, interpretation. But yeah, I hope you enjoy as much as um, I enjoy talking about perfume. Uh, I think it's so interesting because whenever now you will smell a scent from Olivier, you will probably maybe more understand the inspiration and everything. And uh, I think this is what makes the beauty of perfumery as well. Uh, so yeah, it's always, I think, my favorite uh, video to record because I love, love sharing about the perfumers. I think it's so interesting. And there's such a big inspiration for me. And, um, and that's it really. So I hope you liked it. Like the video if you did. And uh, please share, subscribe, show me your love. And uh, that's it. Let's be perfect positive in those weird time and I hope you, you enjoy that so have a lovely lovely rest of the day and I will see you soon bye now